It looks like LeBron is set to hoop at the Garden tonight for the first time in a little over three years. You throw in the combo of him chasing the NBA all-time scoring record, the Lakers really needing a win, and MSG being his favorite arena, and that should all add up for a special night for you New York basketball fans. Ian O'Connor is a New York Post sports columnist, and he's covered LeBron throughout his career, and he joins me now. Ian, I read the article. Talks about how Bron's on the verge of making history, becoming the greatest scorer in, in the NBA history. But you talked about how Net star Kyrie played with LeBron for three seasons, but ultimately left to become the star of his own show. Do you think that was the right decision? And could you see these two pairing up once more throughout their career? Uh, no, it was not the right decision, Brandon. And I'm not sure how anyone walks away from LeBron James, particularly when you consider his style of play. I wouldn't call him pass first, but he's very willing to pass as a superstar. And Kyrie Irving got plenty of shots playing alongside him in Cleveland, of course, when they won the championship together. And yeah, it didn't really make much sense to me why you would ever walk away from a guy who at that point clearly was going to go down among the top three players of all time. But he did, and it hasn't worked out for him. For LeBron, he's won another ring since with the Lakers. And unfortunately, he's now being weighed down by a very disappointing supporting cast in Los Angeles. But I expect tonight that LeBron James will overcome just about everything in his path and try to put on an epic performance. I think I was there in 1995 when Michael Jordan put up 55 in his comeback game at Madison Square Garden. I would expect LeBron to try to deliver that kind of performance. Well, let's talk about that then, because it's been 14 years since LeBron put up 52 at the Garden, and he hasn't scored more than 33 in his last 18 appearances there. Everything going on with him, both personally and team-wise. I was going to say, should we expect a big game from him tonight? But you've already said that. How does he get it done tonight and have that big game? He'll, he'll, I think he'll control the ball. He'll make sure he gets his shots, and he's well-rested for not playing in the Barkley Center Last night, I think that was one of the reasons that he wanted to be as healthy as possible for this night. He was suspended last year and missed his trip to the guard, and that hurt him a lot because it's his, obviously it's his favorite arena. And I remember asking him at the All-Star game in the garden, why, if this is your favorite arena in the world, did you not sign to play with the Knicks? And he didn't have much of an answer for that question. And, and it is a bit of a shame. He once said that he'd want to play every game in the Garden, and, and the fact the Knicks were never stable enough or attractive enough to, to get him signed, particularly in 2010, is a huge miss for this franchise. But I, I would he wants to pace himself, I think, to some extent, because I do think he wants to break the record at home next week. But I, I think the temptation, the stage, being rested, not playing in Brooklyn last night, will all lead to him finding a way. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a run at 50, and I think certainly 40 points or or above is in play. So you're talking Space Jam-type performance from King James. Uh, He's had some memorable performances here in New York, as we've talked about. But how do you think this city will ultimately remember LeBron James? Very worthy, I think. Obviously, the educated New York basketball fan sees him in the same category as Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant as very well worth the price of admission, very worthy opponent, too worthy, in fact. And and I would put him in that category of appreciation that the Knicks fan would have for the greats who've come into this building. And so and also just as as someone, as, as I mentioned earlier, as a, a great free agent who got away in 2010, the Knicks had the cap space and put on the full court press. And I don't think they were ever really a serious consideration, though LeBron James didn't meet with them. And just a guy who loves the garden as much as anyone has ever loved it, including Jordan. They never had a real realistic shot at Michael Jordan. They made a run at him one year in free agency. They never had a realistic shot at Kobe Bryant, but they should have had one in 2010 at LeBron and they whiffed. And I think that the Knicks fan, the who's old enough will remember that. And also look at LeBron James ultimately as a superstar that we could have had and got away. Ian O'Connor, thank you for your time. Thanks, Brandon.